Greetings, this is Mr. Kesslin. We're going to go over some linear speed and angular speed problems. I think these are the hardest, some of the hardest problems in pre-calc just because each of these word problems is a little bit different and there's no one specific method that solves all of them. All right, so you just have to understand the concepts of linear speed and angular speed. For this problem, we have two pulleys. One has a, one is smaller, has a radius of two, and then we have a large pulley with a radius of eight. They're connected to a belt, so a belt is driving these two pulleys. Now, let's think about the concept. The linear speed in this problem is the belt. How much distance is this belt covering over a certain amount of time? Now, to do that, we have a small pulley and a large pulley. The small pulley's got to go faster than the large pulley for them to cover the same amount, for the belt to cover the same amount of distance. So just think about that. If you had two tires, the larger one doesn't have to rotate as fast as the smaller one to cover the same amount of ground. Okay, so they're telling you the angular velocity of the small one. The angular one is three revolutions per minute, and we want to determine the angular velocity of the large one. Remember, we already think that the large one is going to be, doesn't have to move quite as fast to cover the same amount of ground as the, as the small one. Okay. So um, here's the steps I put together. So this is our angular speed for the small one. So it's, it's rotating at um, three revolutions per minute. Remember how fast it's spinning around. Okay, now think about what's the distance it travels every time it goes around. Okay, so we have to figure out the distance it's gonna travel per revolution. So remember our circumference formula. 2 pi r is the circumference. In this case, the radius is 2, so we're going to plug in a 2 here. So 2 times 2 times pi. So we're getting 4 pi inches per revolution. Okay, so that's what the distance it's traveling every time it, this one spins around. Excuse me for a second, where did my drag go? Here it is. Okay, so now, remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out how far did this, the linear speed of this, the linear speed of this smaller pulley, if it's going this angular speed. Okay, so think about, we want, it's, this is all about units. We want inches per minute. We already have this gives us revolutions per minute, and this linear speed gives us the inches per revolution. So when we multiply a revolutions per minute times an inches per revolution, think of these units as canceling out. You have revolutions on top, revolutions on the bottom. What you're left with is inches per minute. So 3 times 4 pi is equal to 12 pi inches per minute. Okay, so both of these they, they travel at different angular speeds, but their linear speed is both 12 pi inches per minute. Okay, so now we have to figure out over here. Okay, we have to figure out if this one's covering a distance of 12 pi inches per minute. Remember, what, let's think about the units. What are we trying to figure out? We're trying to figure out when we get to the end here what the revolutions per minute are, the angular speed for the larger pulley. Okay, so to get an in inches per minute to multiply to something to end up with a revolutions per minute, right, you're going to need your inches to cancel. And you're going to need a revolutions on top. Okay, to see what we're saying, we're starting with the inches per minute. We want to end up with revolutions per minute. So our inches are going to have to cancel out, so we end up with revolutions per minute. Okay, well, how far does this one travel every time it goes around one revolution? Remember, 2 pi r. In this case, r is 8. So every time this one spins around once, it's going 16 pi inches per revolution. Remember, it's, it's basically it's four times as large, so it's going four times farther than this one did every time it spins around once. 
Okay, so you have your 12 pi inches per minute. Now be careful, you want revolutions per inch, so you're going to flip this around. You're saying it's one revolution every 16 pi. All right, you're going to multiply these together. Inches will cancel. I've got a pi on top, pi on the bottom. I end up with our angular speed, which is 12 sixteenths revolutions per minute. Okay, that's a fraction that simplifies. They both have a common factor of four. So that ends up as three fourths revolutions per minute. Okay, this pulley does not have to work. It's four times as large as this one, so it doesn't have to work as hard as this one. Okay, and think about it. This one was going at three revolutions per minute. Since this one's four times larger, it becomes three divided by four revolutions per minute. Okay, it only has to work one fourth the effort that this other one does. Okay, all right. So this is a video you may have to watch a couple times. This is not easy stuff. Um, in fact, explaining it all in one shot, I hope. Hopefully I was, this was satisfactory, but I'd watch the steps. Um, it's all about converting to the right units that you want. So we had an angular speed. Okay. We had to find out how far it travels each time it spins around once. Multiply those two together and this gives you your linear speed. Once you figure out linear speed, you've got to figure out how far the large one's going around each time multiply by re the reciprocal to get the angular speed. Okay, I hope this helps. I'll talk to you later.